Hello everyone, I'm Magic Maestro, because who else would I be? And I'm joined today by my fellow Slytherin and amazing Hogwarts Legacy content creator, Micah, <laughs> from the channel Micah Let's Play. Welcome, Micah. Greetings, witches, wizards, and magicians. We're sitting here today in the Slytherin common room to talk about our experiences covering Hogwarts Legacy, how we were introduced into the wizarding world, the controversy surrounding Hogwarts Legacy, and our concerns and hopes for the launch of the game and beyond. This is part one of the video, and we encourage you to watch the second part on Micah's channel right after this. Micah, would you like to say anything before we get started? Well, first and foremost, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, and you're just one of the coolest content creators that I have had the pleasure of viewing, and I'm really excited to actually be doing this with you today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think we have a lot of fun things to talk about. And uh, with that, maybe we could just uh, get going. So I think the thing I was most curious about was how is it that you got interested in this game? To make a long story short, I have been a fan of the Wizarding World since I was 15 years old. And seeing, seeing that the Hogwarts Legacy game was going to be an open world RPG, again, mixed with, you know, Harry Potter... I was immediately excited when I first heard the news way back. I want to say when I initially heard it was like back in, I want to say 2020 when I first heard about this game, when I started my YouTube channel and I was immediately sold. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's been in development for a number of years and then it's kind of been delayed a number of years as well, <laughs> but I think it's going to be worth the wait. Um, I, I know my interest has um, been from the very beginning. Uh, I'm, I've been really excited about it. Um, was there something that inspired you to create content around Hogwarts Legacy specifically? Like, did you have your channel in mind before you started or was it something that came around after? Well, just so you know, um, I technically started my channel back in February of 2020 and I was just doing it just so I could do something fun on the side. Um, and I initially started my channel as a Resident Evil YouTube channel, but I was going to be doing other Let's Plays in between. And I would do these things called gamer discussion videos. And in one of the videos, I talked about Hogwarts Legacy. Um, and then kind of over time, uh, you know, life challenges come up and I had to slow down on my content. So when Hogwarts Legacy kind of reemerged, I was like, oh my God, like I, I have to be... I have to cover this and it was so it was almost therapeutic covering hogwarts legacy i hope that answers your question yeah because my channel was not originally meant to be uh like a hogwarts only channel it's kind of a a full let's play reaction kind of viewer gaming channel yeah that, i mean that speaks a lot to my experience because uh i wasn't planning on making a channel i i, I didn't have any really like drive to want to make a channel and then i saw the hogwarts legacy trailer um the state of play last year that uh and it was like the you know the, i think it was like 15 minutes or so or more of like game footage and i was just kind of blown away and i was all of a sudden i just had this like desire like from that point on and just to like ah you know what i could i really want to make some videos about this game and so i have some film background so I knew how to do it, but it just was like, oh, can I do this? And can I do it for free? <laughs> and I was and I was able to figure out like, you know, all the little things. And, you know, here we are later, <laughs> you know, so many months later. Right? Um, but yeah. So uh, also, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that I really love your Merlin and Morgana Le Fay video. And it really inspired me to be more creative with my videos. Cause I think at first I was just kind of like, just saying like, here's the newest news, here's the latest whatever. And then I watched that video video of yours and it was like, oh, oh, that's right. I can be creative with this stuff too. And I think that's something unique that your channel has. Um, it's just like, like you have these like fun, like vignettes and intros and whatnot. And I think like people should definitely check them out because um, it's more than just like, oh, what's the latest news about this game? It's like, oh, I can go and be entertained here. So I think people should really um, check out that video and I'm gonna link it in the description here as well. Oh, well, thank you. You know what? I'm, oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm just gonna be real <laughs> with y'all. 
I can't do nothing normal. <laughs> if, if I have an idea to do something, then I'll be like, oh, well, I want to do this first or I want to add this. And it's just, I'm just weird like that. So children, you have been warned. But again, <laughs> thank oh, you. Man. Thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate that. Well, it's totally fun. I mean, it's just, I, I always know I'm going to be entertained anytime I see one of your videos pop up. So with that said, let's go back in time a little bit. Um, tell me first, um, when did you first remember reading Harry Potter? Like, what was that experience like? What was your initial reaction? Okay. Let's see. Okay. We're going to go really far back because Mike is old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am too. Uh, I <laughs> oh, well, then we in good company. We're, seas we're seasoned gentlemen. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, I was uh, 15. Now, mind you, in a past video, I said I was 13. I misspoke. I was 15 because I believe it was 1998 when the first Harry Potter book hit uh, American Shores in September. And I remember I was in school. And not how the I don't know if you remember this, but in school, they used to do these book drives where you could fill out a form and you can get oh, books yeah. or whatever. So I did that and I saw this book called the, you know, well, Americans, the Sorcerer's Stone. And I was like, uh, or the Philosopher's Stone, depending on where you are in the world. Right. And I was like, huh, this is interesting. And I just got the book. And I believe I want to say I got the book in October when I first read it. And I was immediately blown away at the sheer imaginative writing of, of, of KJ when I was looking at it, or JK, excuse me, when I was when I was reading it and I was just in awe of everything. And I was like, I want to go to this school. Like, I want to be there. Mm. And I just remember feeling some kind of weird kinship with mm. reading it, like, because I felt weird as it was. So <laughs> reading this book about a bunch of people who could cast spells with sticks, I was sold. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, no, that's great. So can I, uh, I have a confession to make. Go for uh, it. Uh, the first time I read Harry Potter, I hated it. <laughs> <gasps> Blasphemy. I know, right? <laughs> I, I didn't like the first book. I did not get into it. I, I, I just felt like, Maybe it was the artwork. Like, I felt like it was, like, campy almost. Mm. Like, it just wasn't... It just didn't come across as, like, serious to me. The way that something like Lord of the Rings, where you're like, we're going to spend five pages on, like, this tree. Right? Like, or this <laughs> landscape. And so, uh, I, uh, I totally just... It wasn't my jam. Uh, but then, what happened was, uh, it was the summer of 2005, when book six was about to release... Mm. And my my mom, of all people, was into Harry Potter. And she was like, hey, you should read this series. And this next book's coming out. And it would be better than you sitting around playing video games all day. So, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Fine. I'll give it a try. So I got through. I forced my way through book one. And when I read book two, I was blown away. Because at the end of the book, um, sorry, spoilers, but if you haven't read the books by now, I mean, that's 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 on you a little bit. But <laughs> at the end of book two, Harry asks the Sorting Hat, why did you put me in Gryffindor? And he kind of comes to this realization that it's because it was his choice. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the book became a little bit less about like fate. Like, oh, he's the, the boy who lived and he's the chosen one. And it became more about like, no, it really matters what Harry decides to do. That's what matters. And all of a sudden I was like, okay, all right, I'm on board. So I read a book a day until the sixth book came out, and then I read that in a day. <laughs> so that was my story. You um, are a wizard after my own heart, my dude. Yes. Then yes. I was like, uh, you know, a hungry, a ravenous reader, just like, okay, next book, next book, let's go. <laughs> so... um. So uh, with that being said, you know, my favorite book was the second book. I mean, I kind of go back and forth with all the books now, but at the time, mm -hmm. that second book really captured me. What, what, do you have a favorite book in the series? I do, and uh, I'm cheating on this one. I actually have two favorite books. Um, the first one being uh, Goblet of Fire. 
And the second one being um, the second one being uh, the Order of the Phoenix mm. are my two favorite. I don't know why, what it is about those books. It's just those two stories in particular uh, speak to me because I think I've always been a fan of kind of like. I don't know, you know, this is me being a comic book nerd. Um, but have you ever seen like um like when superheroes go through trials or something? Mm. I kind of looked at it in that way. And it's right. and then when you start to understand the um, the story behind it, when you again, spoilers if you've never read the books, but in Goblet of Fire, when you learn how Voldemort, you know, really planned out this you know, attack on Harry Potter to, you know, to trap, you know, Mad-Eye Moody and to have um, Barty Crouch's son impersonate him and this mm-hmm. whole thing. And when you really think about the the true, like, I guess, plotting and genius behind it, I was like, oh my God, I, I love it so <laughs> much. And then when you go back and you reread it, then knowing the information, you see how Harry Potter was so easily duped, you know? And mm. it was just like, wow, this is incredible. And then in The Order of the Phoenix, what made me like it is when I saw how human Harry was. You know, when he, you see how he was just getting angry about everything. Yeah. And again, you understand how Voldemort was using that to his advantage. You know, understanding this is a young boy and, you know, growing up as a young boy, you know, it, it you know, temperamental testosterone and all that other BS. And it mm. made me feel like, because I know what I felt like when I was 15, I was mad about everything. Yeah. And, and seeing the situation Harry was put in, these impossible odds, and to see how he was you know, kept out of the loop, even though technically it was meant to be at his benefit, but also at his detriment because, you know, he, he's impulsive, you know, he's an intense, an impulsive child. And when you don't give him all the pieces, he does things impulsively and he kind of messes everything up. And I'm just like, Oh, this is so good. I don't know. I just really loved it. And I love the relationship he was developing with his uncle Sirius. Well, his godfather, right. uh, Uncle. C- uh, I call him Uncle Sirius. That's just m- me. I love Ignore that. my my weirdness, <laughs> kids. Um, but yeah, and I I just thought that was so interesting, and it was so heartbreaking. Uh, what happens later with Sirius, and I just was like, oh, I felt so much for Harry. So yeah, those are my two favorites. I totally cheated. <laughs> oh no, that's totally fine. I mean, it's hard for me to have a favorite because there are just so many great parts in all the books. But um uh that's awesome okay here's my next question okay what from the books or movies are you most excited about being in the game like what do you know is in the game that you're like yes that's in the game okay this is gonna probably sound really stupid because i know some people will be like oh hogwarts or (laughs) or this no, it's none of that. It's two things. One is the fact that we get to go to Hogsmeade. And oh. because of how Hogsmeade is described in the books and how it lo- how you envision it. And then when you saw it in the movies, but to know that you actually get to explore Hogsmeade and you go to uh, you get to go to Honeydukes, like like Honeydukes. And I'm just like, like for me, like for me, that is like so exciting. And like, I'm so happy that it's in the game. Mm-hmm. So it's, for me, it's definitely Hogsmeade and Honeydews are the two things I'm super excited to explore. But you know, I'm excited about everything, but just those two things in particular, I don't know why, but I'm super excited about it. Is there something that you wish was in the game that you know isn't going to be in the game or it might not be in the game okay well one i know our patronuses won't be in the game um oh. we're gonna i'm pretty sure we'll have a patronus charm okay um but from what i'm understanding the patronus uh that when you go on the wizarding world website and you do the tests and you get your wand and all that stuff you can get your patronus and my patronus is a black mamba and i would have been i would have loved because i'm a slytherin i would have loved oh, yeah. <laughs> to have my black mama patronus pop out i mean like true air of slytherin bitch you know <laughs> <laughs> Southern <laughs> Club. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I wish was in the game, and hopefully, I hope swimming is in the game. Yes, that would be awesome. I wish that Quidditch was in the game, personally. Mm. But I mean, I know we're gonna have a broom, and I know they're gonna be races. So it's not as though it, there aren't aspects of broom flight that 
you know, they'll be in the game, but I just kind of wish, like, we could play Quidditch just a little bit. <sighs> but, you uh, know, I maybe there's going to be another game. Who knows? Maybe they'll make a sequel. <laughs> or a DLC, because I'm with you on the Quidditch thing. I didn't think about it at first, but yeah, Quidditch would have been really cool to experience. I know personally, had it just been in the game and an option, I would have never taken it. But after seeing in this uh, second um, showcase, when you got to see the guy on the broom, I'm like, oh, Quidditch, like what in the world? But anywho. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Uh, we're going to wrap up part one here, but just before we go, I have one final question for you, and that is, what can people expect to see on your channel after the game launches? <sighs> oh my god, after the game launches, expect a ton of Let's Plays, uh, little goofy videos. I have I have some stuff I'm, I'm thinking of. Uh, and also, when I do my Let's Play, I'm going to be playing it with a guest, so I Ooh. won't be alone while I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy, and I'm really excited. I promise not to reveal who they are until until you see the first episode drop uh, on uh, February 7th, which oh, I'm so excited. That'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So everyone, um, go ahead and... Uh, jump over to Micah's channel. I'll have a link in the description for part two of our fireside chat. And thanks for joining us. No, thank you for having me. I cannot wait. And uh, I can't wait for part two. Thank you for this. Okay, everyone. Bye. Wizards out.